everyone, how are you going? Today I'm going to be talking about my technique for Ulla Primer oil painting. Ulla Primer painting is down in one go, as in very quickly, and you don't go back and put second coats on. So earlier today I produced this painting, it's still wet, um, of fairy wrens with a watering can. So it probably took me about three hours to do. So with today's techniques, I'm going to be talking about brush strokes, the type of paint, uh, that type of thing. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Um, if you'd like to press the subscribe button and press the little bell, then you'll know each time I upload a new video. There's lots to choose from already. Watercolour, oil painting, acrylics, how to draw and all that sort of thing. Okay, thank you. So now I'm continuing on from the last episode and I'm just starting to apply a bit of paint to the canvas. So we have cadmium red here. I'm working in oils today. I like to just throw on a bit of paint here and there and it sort of ties the painting together in the end. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. Um, now I'm just going a bit of white, titanium white oil paint. The technique I'm using today is a la primer meaning down in one go. So the whole thing is going to be done while it's wet. You might also be interested to know that um, you know, I don't actually use a palette, as in you know, a palette, what you mix your paints on most. Well, virtually all of the painting that I'll be doing today is actually mixed on the canvas. So you're always going to see me squirting paint on the canvas. So the colours I'm using here are, as I say, um, Cadmium red, I've got white, a little bit of yellow ochre, and now I'm putting in a little bit of phthalo blue. So I'm applying the paint quite thickly. Obviously, um, when you're working in oil paints and you're doing a layering technique of maybe three layers, then the paint will be so much thinner if you like. But I want this painting to be around for a long time, so I'm putting lots of paint. I usually tell my students that I reckon a little about half a teaspoon of paint to every two square inches, so that's a lot of paint. So now I do a little bit of Windsor Violet. What I'm trying to establish here is the look of maybe a piece of timber at the back of the painting, like an old fence post or something like that. So I'll be adding colour onto colour and you can gradually watch it evolve. Putting a little bit of black here and there. Adding in some yellow oak to the black. Throughout this entire painting, I only use two brushes. The one that I'm using now and later on I'll be using a number one watercolour brush and I put in a little bit of detail. Also, during the entire process of the painting, I never clean my brush in terps. Um, I'll do this for health reasons, I don't want to be breathing in the fumes of the terps. So I just wipe the brush on tissues constantly throughout the painting process. A little bit of thought going on now as to where I'm going next with this. I'm starting to add in some dark colour, there's some black going in there and also some raw amber. Also not forgetting to paint the sides at the same time while you've got the colour on your brush, it makes it so much easier. Generous amounts of paint. So it's said that this is sort of an advanced technique and yeah I would agree maybe it is but if you're just beginning in oil paint I see no reason to not start like this way. There I was just speaking about a, a rubber tipped paintbrush so it's not really a paintbrush it's a scraper so it's made of actually rubber on the tip and I'm just about to now shortly start scraping away some paint so um, I'll be doing that shortly. 
So I'm going to have a green watering can. To make this lovely green, I've used phthalo blue, lemon yellow, and titanium white. I'll get a little bit of paint on to start off with to make sure I'm happy with the colour and then I'll keep working into it. See how much paint's on the brush? Enough to coat all that, mm -hmm. isn't it? I'll still come back and put more paint on shortly. Adding a bit of light now onto the watering can, just a suggestion to start off with. Side there, there's a little painting that I did a while ago of Java sparrows. They're native to Queensland. I live in an area called Black Butt, which is in southeast Queensland. So that was another kind of painting as well, down in one go. Myself, personally, at the moment, I find this is a really good way to paint because I can knock a painting out in two days, which is really good. Whereas when you do lots of layers and drying in between, it can take up to a month to do a painting. In other films that I'm doing, I'm showing you the technique of, with glazing and stuff like that. That's in a, in a future workshop. Don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel as well, because then you'll see all the new films as, as they come out. There's quite a lot already. So I'm just roughing in here with a little bit of titanium white with a, just a little hint of yellow ochre. You can see how the patches of cadmium red are holding the painting together, if you like. By the time the painting is finished, they'll only just be noticeable with the cadmium red. I'm doing the inside of the watering can. It's probably a little bit dark. I'll lighten that a little bit. the handle of a watering can. So just remembering every time the brush goes out of view, I'm wiping on tissues and removing the colour of paint. Now I'm going in with my watercolour brush and just adding a little bit of detail here and there. So I'm actually dipping the paint brush straight into the tube of paint. There's no palette involved. not using any fast drying mediums or anything like that because the last thing I want is for this painting to dry. So I want to keep working wet on wet and that's what my primer is. Side there, there's a painting I did last week, the Fairy Wrens. That's another primer painting, too. Incidentally, the male birds are the blue ones and the females are brown, and I don't usually include many brown um, fairy wrens in the painting because they're quite a boring colour, but um, technically, you probably wouldn't get three males all at once like that, but I think it makes for a happy painting. Just roughing the birds in now with a bit of phthalo blue mixed with white. Still using that fairly large original brush. It's about a half an inch brush. Or a centimetre, as you can say to Danny. I'm going in with a bit of black now, lamp black. A lot of other primer paintings, not necessarily people include detailed, small detailed items like the birds and things, but look, I don't think there's any rules with art. You just make, you just enjoy yourself and have fun. And if somebody likes the painting and they want to buy it, that's great. And um, you know, I'm really not one for making rules of what you can and what you can't do. It's just what pleasing to the eye and whatever way, you know, you get the painting to look the way you want, that's fine.
like to get the birds fairly, you know, in the painting fairly on, early on in the piece because, um, you know, I'm not working from a, you know, a pre-painting or anything like that or copying a photo. This is just coming straight out of my imagination. I will say incidentally though that the um, the actual birds are um, are working from photos of the birds that a good friend of mine, Annette Shoemaker, she's a wildlife photographer, lives in the South Burnett. Um, so I'm working from individual photos of three different fairy wrens. That's the only reference that I'm using for painting. Just coming up on the right there again is one I did months ago now, another watering can, um, contrast I suppose with the orange watering can this time. I'm currently working on a series of various birds of the Blackbutt area where I live. We have a, what we call the rail trail here in Blackbutt, so um, the rail trail is where people ride horses and ride their bikes and it goes on for kilometres between all the old stations, it's fantastic. So if you're ever in Blackbutt on the rail trail, make sure you pop into Janet Spins Gallery and say hello. Um, you can even poke your head around the corner and get your face on film if you like. Um, so now I'm just working in on the background now. Um, because I'm not cleaning my brush at any stage, it's working quite well because the brush is always stained with colours. So just by putting a stained brush on the background and adding some white, it's all sort of like marrying in with the painting. I've managed to get a fair bit of shine happening on this painting with the um, with the lamp thing. I'm not too happy about that, so I'll fix it up next time. So please bear with it. Um, You can see how we're gradually losing the cadmium red, it's sort of getting limped in here and there, but it, it's, still, it's still visible. For the sky I'm using um, old, French ultramarine oil paint, obviously. Lots of paint. Adding a bit of titanium white to the clouds on the horizon, giving it a bit of aerial perspective. Just on the screen there on the right is um, a picture of bell miners. They're, uh, they're the lovely bellbirds that you hear when you come into the South Burnett area. They make that lovely ting ting noise, it's beautiful. Just went for a little coffee break there and I'm talking to myself. Don't worry about that bit though. Just talking about the sky there. <clears throat> now, it actually took me about maybe three or four hours to do this film, so you can obviously see that I sped up. You wouldn't want to listen, to, you know, we wouldn't want to be watching a video because it's four or five hours. So, just starting to rough in the idea now for Queenslander. Queenslander is the type of house that we have in Queensland, obviously. It's made of timber hardwood. A lot of them have been around for a hundred years. It's sort of, if you like, built on stumps, if you like. So the cool air blows underneath and blows all the hot air away and, and cools the house, which makes it great in the winter when it gets up to 42 degrees on rare occasions. So I'm just adding a little bit of colour to the background now, giving a suggestion of trees. On the right hand side there we have a painting, obviously again in other primer. 
Um, the yellow wrens, of, oh, sorry, the yellow robins of Black Bark. It was a bit of more, more of a bit of an abstracty type picture this time round. Um, sometimes my mood of painting changes. I had quite a lot of fun with that one. Beautiful little birds, about 15 centimetres in length. <laughs> my friend Annette Shoemaker, who's the um, the bird photographer, um, she. Uh, her and her husband puts water sometimes in the ponds as they dry as they dry up. We're very short of water at the moment, and I'm sure a lot of the birds will be dying if they didn't put the water there. And it's wonderful for her but because of the water, the birds are attracted to the water hole, and this what makes her be able to, if you like, photograph the birds and the other wildlife in the area. It's usually kangaroos and cockatoos and things like that all trying to get to the water hole at the same time. It would be quite funny from what she's told me. This fine brush, the watercolour brush that I'm using, I'm sticking it in the tube of paint and as I'm applying it to the canvas I'm actually twisting it. So that is actually getting all the paint off the surface but you can't really see it <coughs> that clearly on the film. I'm about to produce a film which is just close up of all the brush strokes that I do but um, just one thing at a time, you know, I'm so excited about doing all these films. Just, you know, I just want to sort of play it and get it all done. Painting on the right again is fairy wrens. You can see I've got a soft spot for fairy wrens. Incidentally, I do paint other things, which is just what I'm doing at the moment. That particular painting wasn't another kind of painting that involved layering and the water. It was actually water at the bottom of that painting. And that was done with glazing, and that probably took me about a month to do that painting. So, whereas the one I'm working on today was done in the one day. Say it took a lot longer. This is only the on the right is about a metre by about two foot, so or whatever. You know, the job sometimes to convert from metres, centimetres, and inches. This one being a bit older than more than two foot space, but three foot by two foot. I like to add the suggestion of some dried foliage and stuff like that to my bird paintings. So often I'll just, on the way out, leaving home in the morning, I'll grab hold of a bunch of twigs or some leaves and I'll have them spread around the floor next to me so that I can look to see what actually a dried up twig looks like and what a dried up leaf looks like. So just coming into view now on the left is a wagon wheel painting that I did with fairy greens, that was on a primer. The wagon wheel, we have a fair few wagon wheels at home, but um, really I suppose proportion of the fairy wrens and the wagon wheels are not correct because the fairy wrens are only like small, I suppose, 12, 15 centimetres and the wagon wheel is considerably bigger, but I thought it would make a nice painting. And, what we call artistic license, get away with murder if, you know, if I want to. Um, so that made quite a nice picture. And I sort of framed it with the wood again, that seems to work quite nicely. And I like to use a lot of turquoise in my paintings. So that, that's worked well. Around all the farms and that where I live, there's, there's wagon wheels. We have one that's almost five foot in diameter, so it must have been a very big wagon in its day. Now I'm just starting to 
think about adding a bit more shadow to this watering can. It's sort of half in there, but it sort of needs to become a lot more three dimensional. I started off originally by putting black inside the watering can to make the shadow, but I found that it was much too dark. So I've added on top of that white and some tins of violet, and that's made it a little bit of warmer and not such a dead looking colour. I'm going in now with some more umber and white. Doing the wings. It's just on the left there, another one of my fairy room paintings has come into view this time with flower pots with the little Queenslander house um, there sitting in the background. Incidentally, while you're watching me painting this, um, previous film before this, which was called Drawing Onto Canvas, Episode 1, in that film I discussed um, sort of preparation of the canvas. Um, so that's well worth a watch. I think it's just a short seven minute film. Um, I, I show a process whereby I draw in using charcoal and the way. Anyway, look at the film and you'll see it really works well. An unusual method. I haven't come across an awful lot of other people that have been using that. So, you know, you may or may not use, know that method, but it's worth watching. And it's the way in which I've prepared all my canvases over the years. Sometime during the film, you. Um, you know, you just press the subscribe button, then um, you know you'll be able to see all, all the other films that I do, and also the little bell apparently will let you know and notify you when my new films come up. I'm just about to do a series on um, pen and ink um, paintings, if you like. In the workshop, I'll be talking about how to make your own pens. Um, be a range of about seven or eight different pens to use. I never, I never use a um, a ball pen. I always use my own. Method, but you know that will be something to watch for. So um, yeah, interesting. Painting on the left there in the background with the chickens. It's one of my favourite paintings. A salad primer down in one go. Some of these paintings, particularly the chicken painting, um, I did quite a few years ago. So I used to be very, very energetic once upon a time and I could stand and paint for hours, but nowadays I take things just a little bit slower. Um, so yeah, a big painting like that, um, another one would have taken me maybe two days. I normally try and develop one of painting in the winter because um, you know, in Australia the paints tend to dry very quickly and you can't work on a painting when it's tacky. So, because the subsequent layers will then crack. So, what the method I use is, if you touch the paint and remove your finger, and you can feel that you've got paint on your finger, it means it's tacky. You shouldn't feel anything, you should look at your finger and have paint on it. But you wouldn't know that it had paint on it, if that makes sense. If it's ever tacky, don't work on it because it more than likely will crack. Some of you, some of you may be new to oil painting. It's it's, it's similar to acrylic painting in some ways, but it is, is a little bit more complicated. Like, had you have decided to have painted? <clears throat> like a light pink watering can or 
your um, a very pale blue watering can and you had let that dry, touch dry, maybe for a week or something, and then had you then decided to put green paint on top, about six months later, the whole of the green paint would crack. I'll be discussing this in a future film as well you know more in depth about uh, oil painting and the layering process so on the left now another little painting has just come into view again our primer great fun doing that background the whole of that background took me about half an hour and the painting is um, a meter high by half a meter wide. So I used quite a big brush to get that background in. An awful lot of my time before I start painting is, is spent thinking about you know, what I'm what you know what what I'm gonna do and um, what I hope to achieve. Sometimes I do a quick little sketch first and a little postcard size piece of paper. Having fun now. I'm always happy when I'm putting in the dead leaves and dead branches. Um, one hand, left hand corner of the painting, I've got one hand corner. Um, I'm usually really tired by about now because at this stage I would have been painting for three hours and it's like, oh, you know, this is fun, but now I'm really, really tired. left hand side now is coming into view a painting that I did of scarlet honey eaters the tiny little birds and they're native to the back part area southeast Queensland all these birds can be found on the rail trail um, of black butt if, you, if you've got enough patience to sit there quietly and look it's a wonderful region where we live it's um you know, it's, it's really lovely to wander along there quietly and just just watch the wildlife. Just coming in now with a bit of lemon yellow, just to add a bit of detail there to the foliage. Moving it up to the top there. coming towards the end of this painting just a little bit of detail now I got this painting the following day I'm, 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 I got up the next morning and I wasn't really happy so believe it or not the painting dried overnight so um, it was 35 degrees overnight and it didn't cool down so that area was dry <clears throat> and if you're living in England or Europe you would you know, that could stay wet for a couple of two or three weeks. So I've had to put a little tiny bit of medium on that area there where I'm working now. And so I'm just adding a little bit of detail on top. So technically that part there is an other primer, as in down in one go as in the first time, but who cares about cheating? Really? With any painting, it's knowing when to stop. Um, you, can, you know, you can keep filling and filling, and uh, and um, you know, I just have to remind myself. You know, just keep stop and have a look. And quite often, I actually take a picture of it on the mobile phone and and um, have a look at it on there. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this has come. It's just coming to the end now. So um, as I say, make sure you. Well, not, you know, subscribe if you wish to the channel. There'll be lots of lovely things to look at, and most of all, I hope to inspire you. And and um, and, and you know, whether you're painting already or just starting your journey, and feel free to find me on Facebook under Janet Skinner, artist and author. And you can always private message me if you've got any problems. And um, you know, it's um, we're lucky us artists. We, you know. We live in a wonderful world of creativity and um, yeah and um, 
and I hope you've enjoyed looking at it. I'm quite happy with that. So, um, yeah, I'll have to adjust the lights next time, not a separate time. Yeah. Hi everyone, it's Mitch here. Thanks for watching Alaparama Painting Janet Skinner Episode 2. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for all future uploads.